Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're going to be analyzing the behavior and body language of Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer was one of America's most notorious serial killers, known for both eating and zombifying his victims. Before we get started, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. So what we're looking at today is Jeffrey Dahmer in an Inside Edition interview. Uh, these obsessive uh, desires and, and uh, thoughts wanting to control them to, uh, I don't know how to put it. Uh... One thing I regularly tell people is that psychopaths will oftentimes tell you who they are. And right now he's telling us, I wanted to control people. I want to control people. I want you to keep that idea as a central theme for Jeffrey Dahmer because he's telling you that's exactly who he is. I don't know how to put it. Uh, possess them permanently. Not because I was angry with them, not because I hated them, but because I wanted to keep them with me. And uh, as my obsession grew... Now, if you watch right here, I talk oftentimes about how blinking oftentimes denotes stress, that at times when people are feeling or thinking about something that's more stressful, their blinking tends to pick up. Watch right here as he's talking about his obsessions. Keep them with me. And uh, as my obsession grew, uh, I was saving body parts such as uh, skulls and uh, skeletons. So that despite that very minimal amount of stress, Look at how plain and calm he is right now. He shows very little outward emotion. He has absolute control over himself. Now you're seeing little bits leak out, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be able to do this. But generally speaking, he has very strong control over his outward emotions. Uh, when you uh, depersonalize another person and view them as just an object, all right, now I really want you to hear this. This is extremely important because Jeffrey Dahmer is saying out loud what is true of so many serial killers, narcissists, and other people that even are, aren't as extreme as he is. He sees people as objects. He literally sees people as various parts. It's such a weird and disgusting way to put it, but that's very much true of how he's going to see people. And so take it very, very literally when he says he sees people as objects depersonalize another person and view them as just an object, uh, an object for pleasure instead of a, a living, breathing human being, uh, it, it seems to make it easier to uh, do things you shouldn't do. The reason why Jeffrey Dahl... All right, you see that mouth position right there? That oftentimes is something we do. We shrink our lips away when we don't want to say something. So right now he is struggling with talking about this a little bit. Watch this part again and you'll see how it leads up to his lips shrinking away. Do things you shouldn't do. The reason why Jeffrey Dahmer was... I always knew that, that it was wrong, but uh, uh, after the... You're seeing him do a whole lot right here. You're seeing him blink his eyes which means there's stress. He's closing his eyes, which means he's thinking about things he doesn't like. He's moving his chin in, which means that he's coming into a defensive stance. Watch all of this again as he answers these questions. I knew that it was wrong, but uh, uh, after the, f the first, the first uh, killing was not planned, I was uh, coming back from the shopping mall back in 78. I had had... Uh, fantasies about picking up a, a hitchhiker and uh, taking him back to the house and uh, having complete control and dominance over him. Once again, listen to what he's saying. His fantasy was to bring him back and have complete control and dominance. Now, maybe in some ways he's trying not to use more explicit words, but still control is the word he goes back to on his own over and over again. Listen to this and we'll move on. And uh, having complete control and dominance over him. And look at how strongly he's making eye contact when he says that. When he says shocking or more intense things, he oftentimes looks directly at the interviewer. There was just not the, op the physical opportunity to do it then. And uh, I started when I moved to Milwaukee. In Once again, he's moving the chin in. He's moistening his lips. 
you can get an idea and rhythm of when he's feeling more intensely based on these small gestures. You'll also notice that his eyes look quite dilated. I don't know if he's on medication or not. It's certainly possible, but it's interesting how large his eyes are despite the fact there are very bright lights in his face. Then, And uh, I started, when I moved to Milwaukee in 81, uh, I started reading pornography, going to the bookstores, um, now you'll notice when he said going to the bookstores, watch this very closely. Being pornography, going to the bookstores. See, he blinked his eyes a little bit. His eyes almost look like they rolled back in his head a little bit. I think when he goes back to that, that's a positive feeling for him. It's a feeling of excitement. There's some release when he thinks about that. We've seen the same thing from Ted Bundy when he talks about those types of things, when he talks about memories that he has. Watch his eyes one last time. Reading pornography, going to the bookstores. Um, eventually that led to uh, frequenting the gay bars. And then I, one time I brought this uh, young man back to the hotel room, the Ambassador Hotel. I uh, was just planning on drugging him and uh, spending the night with him. I had no intention of hurting him. Now, when he says this, I believe that. I really believe that he had no intention of hurting him at that time. That doesn't mean he's any less of a psychopath. And we're going to talk more about whether or not he's a psychopath in a little bit because there's some controversy around that. But watch, watch his reaction right here as he talks. And uh, spending the night with him. I had no intention of hurting him. So you saw him shake his head. Had no intention of hurting him. I oftentimes talk about when those are out of sync, when somebody's head nods, head shakes, those kinds of things don't line up. His lined up perfectly well right there. He seems to be very genuine when he's talking about this. I think that he's, for the most part, being very, very honest. It was it was almost addictive. It was almost uh, a surge of energy. Uh, I wouldn't have to uh, worry about um, any of their needs or anything. I just had complete control of the situation. But Jeffrey Dom Complete control. He keeps using this word control, and I think he wants people to know how much control he had. This is what's so complicated about guys like Dahmer is because he's acknowledging what I did was wrong. It was all bad. I shouldn't have done those things. But there's still part of him that finds it satisfying, part of him that enjoys the things that he's done. So there is conflict within him as he talks about this. Why did you photograph them? It was my way of remembering. You'll notice he exhales a lot when he's asked these questions. It's my way of remembering. It's a sigh. It's like he doesn't really want to do this. It's like on the one hand, maybe he's willing to share these things. On the other, he doesn't like being asked questions, doesn't like having to give answers. I do believe he's being straightforward and truthful for the most part, but he's letting people know how, how much he doesn't like this. It was my way of remembering uh, their appearance, their physical beauty. Uh, I also wanted... All right, so after he said physical beauty, you notice he licked his lips a little bit. I think that there's some excitement there. Because think about this. When people talk, we oftentimes have mental images. So he is having mental images as he's discussing these things. It's almost too disturbing to try to really get into his head. But as he's discussing this, I'm sure there are thoughts and memories going through his mind. So as these memories come up, he's feeling, he's reacting to those things. We can oftentimes react to mental images as though they are real. That's what anxiety disorders are basically based on, the fantasy of what if this happens, what if that happens. There are thoughts that the body reacts to. So recognize that when people like Jeffrey Dahmer or any of these folks think about the things they've done, talk about the things they've done, they're having mental images. They're going to have little reactions when they go back to those places mentally. Physical beauty. Uh, I also wanted to keep... Something, if I couldn't keep them there with me whole, I, at least I felt that I could keep uh, their skeletons. You'll notice he keeps tucking his chin in as he's talking about this, and I don't think it's because he has just amazing posture. I think it's because this is a defensive thing for him to be letting us into his world. And I know he's talked about this in other interviews, but it doesn't change the fact it's hard for him to talk about because he's losing control. Watch his chin right here. With me whole, I, at least I felt that I could keep... Uh, they're skeletons. And 
I even went so far as planning on uh, setting up an altar with uh, the uh, ten different uh, skulls and skeletons. And what was the purpose of the altar going to be? Uh, as a sort of uh, memorial, uh, a, a point where I could, I don't know. It's- now, this is interesting. He is feeling a lot more in this part than he has at anything leading up to this. He's using his hands to talk. You saw that a little bit. He put his hands up because he's envisioning it as he's talking. And there's something about it that's almost overwhelming. He's having a hard time putting it into words, which he's usually able to stay calm and discuss things. But there's something so intense about this altar. And if you think about what he's talking about, he's talking about literally making an altar out of skulls and things. I mean, it's it's so beyond disturbing. It's almost hard for us to not separate the fact that this is reality. This is somebody talking about things that he's actually done. Let's go back and watch this part again. A, a point where I could... I don't know. It's, it's, it's so bizarre and strange, it's hard to describe. A place where I could collect my thoughts. Um, and as he said, bizarre and strange, he, he squints his eyes because even he recognizes he doesn't actually like thinking about this, I think, which is interesting. I don't know. It's, it's, it's so... See, right there, his eyes are squinting. We do that when we think about things we don't like. So there is something that's almost too strange even for him. Bizarre and strange, it's hard to describe. A place where I could collect my thoughts. And I was about uh, 15 and 16, and they got worse and worse. What were your fantasies about? Uh, the question he really doesn't want to answer. Closes his eyes, lets out a big exhale. That's a way of trying to calm himself down. It's a way to also let people know, I don't like this. Because we know people are paying attention to us. So doing that unconsciously is a way to say, I really don't want to answer your question. Worse and worse. What were your fantasies about? Uh, they were sexual fantasies of control, power, uh, complete dominance. Uh, they became reality. Was there pleasure in that fantasy? There was excitement. Uh, now, there was a little bit of fear right there when he said there was excitement. Watch the corners of his mouth because fear looks something like that. And if we see little micro expressions of it leak out. Was there pleasure in that fantasy? There was excitement. uh... See, eyebrows went up, corners of his mouth went down. It was small, but there was a little bit of fear when he talks about the excitement. Fear, pleasure, all mixed together. I was uh, branching out. That's when the cannibalism started. Eating of the heart and uh, the arm muscle. It was a way of uh, making me feel that uh, they were a part of me. It, it, for at first, it was just cur- All right, so there's a few things that we noticed there. One, he's making that eye contact like I talked about. Every time he says a body part, he looks at the interviewer. And having sat with some people in forensic settings that are very intense or that have done awful things, when they make eye contact with you, it feels weird, especially when they're doing something like this. So I think it's really hard to tell because he's not looking at the camera, but he's talking to an interviewer how intense it would be to be on the other end of that, what that would feel like for him to talk about eating somebody's heart and then looking you in the eye. Really, I, I would not, I do not envy this interviewer at all. Started eating of the heart and uh, the arm muscle. It was a way of uh, making me feel that... Uh, and there's him tucking the chin again. They were a part of me. It, it, for, at first, it was just curiosity. There was that stress, the blinking as he's saying at first, it was just curiosity. And then it became compulsive. Then I tried to uh, keep the person alive by inducing a zombie-like state. Were you almost flaunting it? Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the the desire was. I wanted to keep something of of the person with me. Now, look at how more, much more energetic he is right here as he's talking about this. His posture's changed a little bit. He has a higher energy, I mean, which is still relatively low because Jeffrey Dahmer tends to be very middle of the road, but he seems more energetic talking about this. There seems to be a little bit more excitement talking about this. Watch this part again, then we'll keep going. The, the desire was I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me, and uh, the person to blame is sitting right across from you. That's the only person. Not uh, parents, not society, not pornography. I mean, those are just excuses. It's very rare to hear a serial killer say these things. So it's amazing to me that he actually was willing 
to open up like this because truly Ted Bundy had plenty of people to blame. John Wayne Gacy just outright denied everything even after he confessed it. Most serial killers will blame society, their parents, somebody. So it's fascinating for me to see him not externalize blame elsewhere because that's near universal. Let's watch that again, then we'll keep going. Parents, not society, not pornography. I mean, those are just excuses. If you were out on the street now, would you still be committing the crimes? Probably, if this hadn't happened. Watch his face when he says probably now. I believe him when he says that. Would you still be committing the crimes? Probably. Once again, this is more energy than he usually shows us. So when he raises his eyebrows, he's trying to bring attention to his face, something he doesn't do very often. So when he's saying he would probably still be committing these crimes, he really does mean it. Probably. If this hadn't happened, there's no doubt I probably would be. So hopefully this has helped you better understand his body language and helps you better understand Jeffrey Dahmer a little bit. I've read of a neuroscientist who claims that he was not a psychopath, but he in fact just had borderline personality disorder. And as a personality disorder expert, I entirely refute that concept. That doesn't mean that there weren't aspects of his behavior that were like borderline personality. But I absolutely think that if anybody is a psychopath, it is Jeffrey Dahmer. Part of what's talked about is that because he has empathy, Therefore, he can't be a psychopath. And psychopath, just to be clear, is not a, a well-defined real diagnosis. It's just a lay term that we use to describe certain people. But for someone to be manipulative, you have to have some degree of empathy. Ted Bundy faked emotions extremely well, but he had enough empathy to manipulate people. You have to have some empathy to be able to manipulate. These people don't have an absolute and abject lack of empathy. They just have very low empathy. So I believe 100% that Jeffrey Dahmer was a psychopath. He was unfortunately born to be a psychopath. This is just how the man was wired. Per usual, let me know in the comments below if there's any other cases you want me to analyze. Last thing before we get finished up is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, thanks for watching.